Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming back to the Citrine Path. Um, today, again, we have myself, Amber, and my amazing co-host. And I'm Patsy from Violet Elements. Before we get started here, we just want to share real quick that this is our journeys and our guest journey on their spiritual life and their herbal life. So everything we talk about here, we do recommend you do your own research and definitely talk to your provider before you start any herbal remedies or home remedies. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Citrine Path. Um, I just want to say thanks so much for sticking with us through our little vacation we had there for a minute. Um, life got crazy and yeah, but today we are going to be talking about something that is my new obsession and um that is frequencies and how they impact you so how have you been mama good good i feel a little out of practice this morning um i forgot that i needed my mic but it was kind of nice to have a little break and come visit you guys over there and squeeze the babies Oh yeah, we were hoping that we were going to be able to get an episode in with the both of us together, but then uh, we had some nasty flu bug go through the house. So that kind of changed our plans. Yeah, it was a nice uh, add to our vacation for sure. <laughs> yeah, ending it on a not so sunny note. All right, I'm excited to hear all about your stuff. I mean, I kind of already know a little bit, but I know you've learned, I've been learning a lot more and just finished some more of your certifications and you are rocking it. So what, what are we talking about today, Amber? Fill us in. Yeah. So the first thing I want to do is talk about chakras a little bit, because before you can understand what I'm saying, if I'm throwing all these numbers at you, it's kind of what the chakra system is. So I'm sure if you guys are watching this podcast, I'm sure you've probably at least heard of what a chakra is, but it's kind of like a fuse box that you have for your house, but for your body. So there's seven of them and they go from the base of your spine all the way up to the top of your head. Um, And they have correlations to do with your emotions, how you're feeling, even down to physical pain in your body sometimes. And they're all different colors. So most of the time, if you see like, like, hang on, like my cup, it's, I don't know if well, you that's cute, see, right? I don't know if you guys can see it very well because of the light, but that's all seven colors of the chakra system. Um, and they're kind of the foundation of energy within your body. Correlating to that, let's talk a little bit about what it looks like whenever you have your chakras aligned. So your root chakra, the base of your spine, helps to release fear and guilt, helps you feel balanced and stable and like rooted, like a tree's roots, you know, they make them strong and sturdy and grounded to earth. Your sacral, which is like your belly button area, enables change. So it's like when you have a gut feeling, you know, and you feel like that's something that you need to do or something you want to do or something's wrong even sometimes. That's your sacral, your solar plexus, Mm. which is where your like diaphragm is at, enables transformation. So helps you transform. If you're that stuck, sometimes you feel like you're very stagnant in life and you're not getting anywhere. Your throat chakra, oh, sorry, heart chakra, kind of your heart, you know, kind of self-explanatory, but it connects you with others. So if you're feeling, feeling closed off, like you're not able to like have a heart to heart conversation with people, um, you're not feeling passionate about things, your heart chakra is closed off. Your throat, another one, kind of self-explanatory, um, helps you express your yourself, helps you talk about what you want to talk about. Um, if it's closed off, you would feel like maybe you can't express yourself. Um, you constantly are having like sore throats even um or you have like lymphatic issues in your throat your third eye is intuition and op- isn't yeah 
practice in your intuition and opening yourself up kind of to the more spiritual side of life helps you see things in a different light if that's closed off um you'll kind of feel closed off from the world in a sense like you won't see things the same way as everybody else does um you're gonna feel very just out of tune and then your crown which is actually above your head is your connection to the vine and the universe so think of that as your telephone line from yourself to the outside world so if that's closed off again you're going to feel very unaligned you're going to feel very drained disconnected not um enlightened is a word but you know like inspired by everything hmm that is crazy. So you mentioned on the throat and in the and the sacrum one that they have like physical symptoms too. So if your chakra is that out of line, it could kind of tend to that. Do people that are more in tune with what like the chakras and the healing side of it and the more spiritual side, do they notice it more or does it kind of go to everybody or is that something that you know for sure? Um, I think personally when people don't realize it is when they're out of tune with their own body and their own understanding of these things. Because, I mean, I now looking back, I've had the situation happen many times before myself also. Like I remember, um, let's say just like a year and a half, two years ago, no, I don't even think it's been that long. Um, I had to go to the hospital because my tonsils all of a sudden just like exploded overnight. And I had no idea why. And they thought they were going to have to take my tonsils out. They thought I had like had to get it lanced open and drained because I couldn't hardly breathe. I couldn't eat or drink anything. Um, and now looking back, I'm like, oh, my gosh, there is this friend in my life that I totally wasn't agreeing with what was happening. And I didn't want to be around that person. And anytime I was, I was constantly biting my tongue and not saying what I wanted to say. So therefore, my throat decided it was going to fight back. If I wasn't going to use it and speak, then it wasn't going to allow me to speak what I needed to speak anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and there was also a story that my um, I learned while I was taking all my classes. So... The teacher who taught her classes, um, she also teaches like creative writing classes because she's a, an, a published author. So she helps other authors like work through what they need to work through to be able to put their books out. But she was talking about how she had a client that every time she set a weekend aside and said, look, this is going to be my writing weekend. I'm going to get this book done. Um, she would end up getting a really sore throat and would get sick every weekend that she had set aside to work on her book well then my teacher was like okay well what's happening in your book why are you getting these sore throats time after time after time to stopping you from working on your book well i'm to find out there was things in her book that she wanted to talk about and she wanted to say but she didn't feel like she could or she didn't feel like it would be accepted if she said those things in her book and um, my teacher said she helped her work through those things, helped her open her chakra up, help her realign herself. And then all of a sudden, she wasn't getting sore throats anymore. And she was able to then publish her book. Wow, that's crazy. So what are some things that people could do to realign their chakras or to tune them back in? So um, you can use crystals. Uh, there's actually certain crystals that, well, multiple different crystals that are aligned um, with your chakra system. So, you know, you can put the crystal on your, say it's your heart, put your crystal on your heart and you can rub it and you can visualize like, sometimes what I like to do is I like to use a, a light in my head and picture like a light beam coming throughout my body and then going into the crystal. Um, you can do a meditation and just sit and picture like, you know, at first start with the root. Picture a red 
light going from your feet, going through your body and shooting out the top of your head. After you did that, then picture um, an orange one. Same thing, out your body, out the top of your head. And do that for every single um, chakra, every color. That's another way you can use it to realign yourself or um, using like sound therapy. So each chakra has a different frequency. So each frequency or note, if you guys are musically inclined, um, is connected to each one. Or there's a, it's called, it's the 528 hertz pole. And we'll talk about it. If you guys are on our social media, you've seen me post about it before. But that bowl is connected to every single chakra in your body. So even just using that one bowl, you can realign yourself. So that bowl is kind of like the skeleton key to help unlock all of them? That bowl is insane. They call it the uh, miracle tone because it does fascinating, amazing things. Like I have some notes written down on here, but it's crazy. Interesting. Okay. so. When let's say you're you're working with somebody, and since we've talked about the throat one a couple times, let's just stick with that one. Um, so let's say they come in and you're like, "Yeah, let's let's work on your throat chakra." Um, is there a way that you can work on it particularly, or do you want to work on all of them? Like, do you want to focus on one every time, or? Is it best to kind of go through all of them because they are so connected? Yeah. So, I mean, if you're already there, um, I would always just realign everyone, especially if it's the first time that we've been meeting. I would definitely align every single chakra and then go from there because there might be something at your root that's not allowing you to feel safe enough to express through your throat. You know, it could have other connections down the line that you're not seeing or realizing. That could be impacting that situation. So I would align every single one, completely reset you. And then, you know, maybe the next session, you know, realign yourself again. Because I think everybody could be realigned. Like there's nothing damaging from it. It's not going to do anything but just help you. Um, And then after that, we can go specifically into the throat. So what you could do is take like a crystal literally put it on your throat and then there's um they're called tuning forks and what it is is the little metal instrument that you can put directly onto your body and what i would do is take your tuning fork and put it directly onto the crystal on your throat and then allow the vibrations from the tuning fork and the frequency to flow through the stone into your throat wow that sounds so crazy (laughs) um i have seen the tuning forks before like we've been to different places where they were for sale and messed around with them um our youngest your little brother is super sensitive to them like extremely sensitive we weren't anywhere necessarily close to him definitely weren't touching him and we just hit it with the mallet just playing around and he like freaked out so Would that be that he's just super in tuned with it? Or does that mean if it bothers him that much, that maybe that's the one that he needs to work on or work with? Like, how do you know, other than physical symptoms, that their chakras need work? Well, I know you were saying a little bit about, like, feeling disconnected or stuff like that. But, like, is there a way that you can diagnose it? Like, if people don't know like if they come to you and they're like i just feel this this way but i'm not sure like what it is or why like is there something that you do like as an evaluation to like see what jumps out to you or do you just use your intuition of what you're getting off of them uh mainly i do based off my intuition because i mean i don't like i can't treat or diagnose anything so i don't know how much of what they're telling me is based off of like something they need to go to the doctor for um my only thing is why i'm there is to try and give them the best tools that i can give them so you know if they're talking to me and they're like yeah i just feel really bleh like i don't i don't have any connection to nothing that's something i can help them with 
you know, like, do they maybe need to go and talk to a therapist? Probably. I think all of us do. But um, if you're like feeling really moody and you're just really up and down, that could be something that's based off of your solar plexus. Um, and as far as him having like a sensitivity to it, there's definitely people that I don't think sound therapy is for. Um, there are some people that are like, you know, have sensory disorders or um, things like that, that they just can't handle it. People who have pacemakers. I don't think you guys should be participating in sound therapy. I'm sorry, but the vibrations and the sound, they don't know what kind of impact that could have on the pacemaker. Um, people who are pregnant because sound travels faster through water and is um, louder through water. So the baby being inside of a big bubble of water, they are not sure how the sound is penetrating through the water and impacting your baby inside. Also, if you have like, you know, any metal um, implants, they don't know how that's going to impact you. Um, like my husband, he has metal in his shin, he has metal in his neck. Um, and I still play the singing bowl and stuff for him, but I just be sure I don't put any instruments not on or near those locations because again the sound can hit the metal and I'm not sure what they're going to do they're not really sure what they do yet so there's still a lot of stuff they're still figuring out but they've done a lot of amazing science so far to prove that it's worth it that's crazy well I know like um different materials well, and like we already talked about before, plants put off different frequencies and stuff. Um, so I see how that could be like so wool puts off um, a higher frequency and hurts than the human body. So so does um, cotton. Cotton does the same thing. Like it puts off a higher thing. Um, so I've heard a lot of stories of people wearing like polyester or non um, organic clothing. So like not cotton, not wool, not linen. Um, And that they have done studies and stuff that it shows that actually makes the people almost thicker. So that's super interesting to think that that could be affecting your chakras if it's interfering frequencies which if your chakra is out of line then it could lead to all these other symptomatic issues and emotional issues that's super crazy yeah and one thing that people don't like think about a lot um everything has a frequency everything has a vibration to it and physics um that's all everything is is just vibrating sound so like Let's say if my hand was at the right frequency, it would be able to go right through my wooden chair. You know, if your body was vibrating at the right frequency in physics, you'd be able to walk right through a wall. So, you know, even having wood floors versus carpet flooring, you know, does the wood flooring put off a different vibration, a different frequency? And you know, does that impact your person? Does that impact your energy field? Because you're walking on it all day. You know, that's electricity coming off of your slippers, coming off of your socks as you're walking across. I remember all the time as a kid, I would scoot my feet across the floor and go shock everybody. Um, while you're doing that, you're picking up and you're rubbing off on that frequency on the ground. And your feet are connected to your root. So does that play a part in it also? I don't know. That's crazy. Well, I mean, now now that you're going that route, like your couches, your beds, your sheets, like all of that. Like if you're sitting on a microfiber or polyester couch all day or a plastic, who knows what a fake leather material your office chair is that you're sitting on, like that could go... A bunch of different ways but then yeah. that kind of goes back to the whole grounding thing like the grounding in the forest bathing 
because now they have like those grounding sheets that you can put on and like um, mats that you could put on the floor under like your chair where your feet touch the ground. That's super crazy. Yeah. Well, and like, I don't want this to be a situation where somebody's like, oh my God, we need to go get wool sheets. We need to go get a wool couch. Like we need to go get all this stuff. And you know, that's not what I'm saying. It's like, you know, understand what's happening, you know, and maybe whenever you're wanting to go sit and meditate or, you know, whatever it is that you do, maybe go get like a wool sheet and go wrap yourself in a wool sheet before you go or, you know, get a cotton shirt and some nice cotton pants and go sit and meditate wearing your cotton. I think, you know, we live in a socialized world where everything is super easy for us which is great at times but at the same time it helps disconnect us from the world around us so you know understand these are situations that can disconnect us let's work harder and be more involved in making us get back to where we want to be is how I look at it like I'm not gonna go spend thousands of dollars on clothing because that's just not feasible for me as much as I would love to I can't justify that when my cat's just going to eat all the armpits out my damn shirts so um like just understand and then say okay look I'm going to start making a point to go stand outside for 10 minutes every day with my shoes off and ground myself you know and help realign myself and then maybe say okay you know what on Saturday this week Let's go and put our cotton clothes on and just go out in the woods and walk around for a little bit and reconnect yourself that way. Yeah, that's super good points. I guess it's like just being more aware of what you're exposing your body to. You know, like, does your deodorant have aluminum in it? Um, Does your toothpaste have toxins in it? Um, You know, all of that affects you and comes back around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like. The deodorant thing that's yeah like yeah yeah that's a rabbit hole in itself (laughs) but you know like I understand wanting to be the best person that you want to be and I am a thousand percent for it but you know I like my McDonald's I'm a McDonald's alcoholic so if I sit down and eat my Big Mac I don't want to feel guilty about eating my Big Mac if I've made homemade meals and ate food straight out of my garden and you know meat that we went and harvested ourselves for the other six you know and I think it's okay to have you know dwell in the leisures of the life you know because our ancestors have worked hard to get us to this point so be grateful for it understand it's poisoning your body but damn it tastes good (laughs) so funny Uh, yeah and I mean that's kind of the same thing like there's things that I know that I shouldn't necessarily eat you know like as much chocolate covered pretzels as I do um but I know like I yeah I guess it's just the being more aware of what you're doing and like, like you're saying pick your battles like Maybe I won't drink soda, but I'll eat a bag of chocolate-covered pretzels in one sitting. Well, like, and chocolate-covered pretzels, I mean, that's not a horrible thing. Chocolate helps with, you know, there's all kinds of studies on dark chocolate. You can go do that rabbit hole yourself. But, like you said, deodorant. You know, what kind of candles are you burning in your house? What kind of Mm. laundry soap are you using? Are you using the... uh, You know, like the dishwasher pods in your dishwasher, because those have bleach in it and all kinds of other nasty stuff. And it's going on your food and on your fork and it's sifting it in your pie hole. So, you know, there's so many other things that people don't realize and don't acknowledge, but yet they're going to harp on you for eating chocolate covered pretzels. There's, I think there's other areas that are more impactful to our health. I mean, okay, food is medicine. Hang on, let me backtrack. Food is medicine. The food is the gateway to your health, in my opinion. You know, I spent $20,000 on pots and pans because I wanted to get the best pans I could to cook food for our family. 
So, you know, if you're buying fruits and vegetables, if you're, you know, eating pretty healthy, I would say, okay, awesome. You've gotten halfway there, there. Take the time, go back, look at all these other situations. That's a good point, good points. Um, to get back on the frequency thing. So, well, just because I wanted to share what I learned or looked up. Yeah, yeah. So, and you, you kind of already talked about it, about like the sheets and stuff like that. Um, but I have, I have wool hair. I took them out one time. I think they were out for like 15 or 20 minutes because I was going to leave them out for the weekend and couldn't handle it. Like I felt so weird and like off. So we put them back in. Um, So it made me like look up some of the stuff about it. But in 2003, there was a Jewish doctor, Heidi Yeldon, Yeldon. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, But she did a study on the frequencies of fabrics. So in general, like on an average, most people's body puts off a signature frequency of 100. And that give or take your age plays into it, your health will play into it. Um, Think about most people that are dying or on the verge of death is like less than 50. So that your hundred will vary. Um, but so organic cotton was tested at 110, where polyester was 10. Wow. Oh. So what she was dis- like trying to figure out was what happens when you combine them, kind of like how you were talking about with interfering frequencies and stuff. Um, So they said that a deceased person, so I think in the study it was like shortly deceased, um, was 15. So wool and linen both had 5,000. But if you did linen and wool together, because they were both 5,000, it's like a negative and a positive. It like cancels itself out. Um which was really interesting. Um, But they said that sleeping on linen sheets improved like your mood, um, healing, uh, reduced fungus and bacteria growth. It regulated your body temperature better. So I thought that was super interesting that just changing the fabric like had all these different parts in it. Um, rayon, which typically is made from wood, pulp, includes bamboo, is 15. Polyester can be up to 10. Spandex and other, like, polysynthesized is up to 15. Nylon is 15. Silk is 15. If you're wearing, like, polyester and spandex and all of that, the, what she was testing is it lowers your human body frequency. So if you're wearing something that's 15 and your body is at 100 um, or maybe even a little bit less because you don't have like the best health, maybe like gut issue, you know, whatever, that it's going to lower your body frequency. And the lower your frequency, the harder it is to heal and repair and get better. So I thought that was super interesting that she was also going on talking about how um, hospitals have now gone to like non-cotton or linen sheets because they don't stain as hard or as easy and that they're cheaper than getting like 100% organic cotton sheets. So then there was a whole thing on like, are you getting sicker from being on like plastic mattresses and non-natural material sheets and all of that stuff, which I thought was like super interesting. That's crazy. Yeah, like, I think that hospitals 
moving to the polyesters. I mean, I understand. You're right. It's cheaper. It's probably easier to take care of. But that was always the best thing about the hospitals is they always had the clean, nice, soft sheets. That's so crazy. Yeah. And there she was just getting ready to start doing um, testing on hemp. And so she was talking about how hemp could be like the new like master fabric um, because it like breathes better and it has like all of these other things that's stronger than cotton. Um, so but when I looked it up, like when I read it, it doesn't have anything additional on it. It's, it's just something that she mentions at the end of it that they're looking into hemp and going to do the same testing. So that'd be super crazy to see when they finally conclude that, how hemp compared to linen and wool, because those are like your two like top fabrics. Um, so like, but again, you're not going to want to wear wool and linen together. So it'd be like a wool sweater with a cotton undershirt type thing. So that way you don't cancel out the, High vibe and frequencies of the wool. That's so crazy. I'm really excited to see what she finds about about hemp. Yeah, and it's, you know, like, hemp's been around forever, but the use of it has changed in the last hundred years than what it was before. So it's super crazy to think that that might have been, like, something that was frequently used different, you know, in years past um versus now yeah actually i have up here i have a 1800s medical book um and in there it actually talks about how they use hemp as treatment for women that were in labor and stuff so i a thousand percent know that hemp has changed what it's used for but that's crazy yeah i 100 percent think they should bring hemp production back i think they should make houses out of it i think they should make our toilet paper out of it clothing like everything yeah we looked into um building a hempcrete house um in over here in idaho it's a little bit looser on permits and building structures and stuff versus where you're at um so it's a lot more easier and feasible for us to do it here so that might be something we still do in the future um we definitely want to get like a homestead with tiny homes so the grandbabies could just come live at lolly's house yeah whenever they're being crazy you'd be like get out of here go bug your lolly yeah i can't but wait <laughs> we have uh about a minute left today went by fast i know you have any yeah. last thoughts final words well i was just gonna ask like um, why don't you share with everybody some stuff that is coming up that you want to do with your samples? Like, how can they hear what you're doing and how can they figure out how to get in touch with you to do a sample treatment? Yeah, so just um, just send us a message. Um, all of our social media stuff should be linked down below. I want to do sample um stuff based off of trauma release um i want to start working one-on-one -on -one with like veterans with ptsd and stuff like that um and i want to start helping people with like essential oils and stuff so taking essential oils and blending it together with the sound bowls um to help again release trauma help with relaxation and deeper meditation wow that's great i love oil so i'm a huge fan of that department well, thank you, Amber, for sharing all your fun stuff. And I love watching you play the bowls. So I I hope maybe one of these times that you could uh, do that on here. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, we'll have to do it another time because as soon as I play the bowls, the kids wake up and start running. So uh, that's I, true. Yeah. <laughs> but we are about out of time. So thank you guys so much for joining us this week. Thank you, Mom, for being here again. And we talk about something cool again next week remember we do not treat cure or diagnose any illness so if you have any questions about anything we talked about today please reach out to your provider 
So we are always so honored and blessed that you spent your time with us. And we can't wait to visit with you next time. So please come back and visit us. But until then, go forth with love and intentions.